Hello YouTube and welcome back to another sensor spotlight. Today we're going to be taking a look at the radar sensor and some of the attributes you might find useful for it in Python. Uh, so starting out with our example, this one I actually had sort of a difficult time coming up with a useful one and in the end I really didn't. Um, but this is an example of what you might use it for. So if we play the game, cube falls, and we can jump, but only when we're on the ground, so we can't fly off. And this is possible because the radar sensor will detect whenever a object with a certain property is inside uh, the radar's space. So this can be uh, maybe a bit difficult to explain. Uh, so if I add a cone, you can imagine that the ray sensor is spitting out a cone. Uh, so here is the default cone and you can picture the cube as uh, basically spitting out a cone from the center of the cube. So as we set the ray to be larger it is the same as if this cone is getting larger. And this cone or this radar uh, will detect whenever an object is touching it that has a certain property. So for this example, I'm looking for the property ground. A even better way of visualizing this is if we go to game and hit show physics visualization and I play the game, you can see there we have an outline of what the radar actually looks like. You can see it has red wireframe uh, representing the radar. So if I change some of these settings here, you can see it updates in the physics vis visualization. Um, so I guess uh, that's really probably not the best explanation of how the radar sensor works. Uh, I'm sure somebody else has a better one out there. So now we're going to take a closer look at the sensor itself. Okay, so here we are looking at the radar sensor, and as always we can see that it has the same settings as the always sensor. We also have a property field, an axis field, an angle setting, and a distance setting. So starting with property, this is changing what property must be on the object that is inside the radar in order to set the sensor to positive. So for instance, in our game here, I have this plane, and it has the game property ground on it. So whenever we play the game, and the radar sees the plane, it triggers the sensor. Now, if this was something different, like not ground, or NTO ground, whenever we play the game, nothing happens. And that's because it has not triggered the sensor, because the sensor is looking for the property ground. So the sensor will only trigger whenever an object with the property ground is inside of it. Next we have axis and this changes the direction that the radar is facing out of the object. Uh, so we have all of the different axes here. So we can choose a negative version of the x, y, and z axis or a positive version as well. So you see here I have it set to the negative z axis. If I would change it to the x axis and play the game, we see now it's coming out of the side of the cube. Next we have angle, and this is changing what angle the radar is coming out of our object. So if we use the cone again, add mesh cone, we can picture this as changing the uh, radius 1 setting on the cone, or the bottom radius here. So you, as we make the angle larger, it basically makes the bottom radius of the cone larger. So a radar with a setting of 1 degree is pretty much going to be just a straight line, um, and a degree of 180 would be basically a straight plane going out to infinite space and that is why you cannot set the angle above 179.9 degrees. So if angle is changing our 
radius 1 on the cone, then the distance setting on the sensor is going to be changing the depth setting. So for instance, if I up the distance, that'll make the cone taller or shorter. Again, these aren't necessarily uh, the best explanations of these settings, uh, but I think you should be able to get the idea. Angle changes the angle that the radar is shooting out from your object. Distance is saying how far will it go. So that was a look at the sensor. Now we're going to hop over into Python and check out some of those attributes. Okay, so here we are in Python, and of course we can get the sensor the same way as all of the others. Now the radar sensor is a bit strange in that uh, most of the attributes that you would think were configuration attributes are not. So for instance, we see that angle is a status attribute, not a configuration attribute. Uh, the same with distance. Starting with the configuration attributes, we have axis, and this will take an integer, or it will return an integer that represents uh, which axis the sensor is using. And there should be a little note card that pops up in the video now that shows uh, which numbers uh, represent which axes. Okay, so moving on, we have prop name, and this will either take a string or it will return a string and this represents the property name that the sensor will be looking for on the object. So for our example we are looking for an object with the property ground. Moving on to the status attributes we have uh, sensor.angle and this will return the angle of the radar. Uh, next we have sensor.distance and this is returning the length of the radar. So this is basically the height of our cone. Uh, next we have the cone origin. This will return where the radar begins, the point where the radar begins. And as far as I know, this will be the same as the world position of the sensor's owner. Next we have cone target, and this returns the world position of the target of the radar. Uh, or you could also see it as this returns the world position of the center of the bottom of the cone. So for instance our cone here, if we did the target position it would return the center point of the bottom of it. Next we have hit object and this is the same as the ray sensor hit object and the collision sensor hit object. This returns the last object that was hit by the radar. And moving on, we have the more useful hit object list. And this returns a list of all the objects that were hit by this ray or that triggered this sensor uh, within the last frame. That was a look at the radar sensor and some of the attributes you might find useful for it in Python. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to try and help you out. If you have a suggestion for any future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, or there is a link in the description. Also, really quick note, I recently restarted my Let's Play Blender Games channel, uh, so you can check that out. Link in the description. Um, next time, we are going to be taking a look at the random sensor. But until then, I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.